Hey YouTube, welcome to episode 6 of my firewood processor build. Uh, this episode is part 1 of the hydraulics. Uh, I started out just mounting the pump up. This was a lot of on and off with this bracket, getting everything lined up. I decided to break the hydraulics up into at least two parts, because I'm waiting on... Waiting on fittings and things of that nature, so I figured I'd just split it up since I had some time in between where I could edit the video and get it out. Uh, this is a 28 gallon per minute pump, two stage from, got this one from Surplus Center. All my valves and stuff all came from Surplus Center. So my valves are for the splitters a Prince auto cycle valve with power beyond. Um, that will feed a priority flow divider, which will feed the rest of my valves. Uh, before I mounted up the valves, I needed to clean the shop. It was pretty bad shape. Uh, cutting the bracket off of that crane that I salvaged. And the bracket was for the motor that uh, I mounted for the infeed. I wanted to get that mounted up before I start working on the controls just in case it was in my way at all or make it harder to get to after the fact. Trying to figure out where to mount this was actually a pretty big pain. Uh, I ended up just kind of settling on as short as I could make it as far as the chain length and not have it interfere with anything. So uh, this is the position I pretty much settled on. And I just made it tight enough that you basically pull both. Uh, Sprockets off at the same time, kind of like a timing chain on an engine to get it on and off. I figured that was the easiest way to do it. Uh, hopefully the chain doesn't stretch too much and that causes issues, but I don't think it will. If it does, I have plenty of that chain left over. I can always make a new piece. Now uh, this two pieces I'm going to weld on here are the foundation basically for where I'm going to mount my controls. I kind of just guessed what would be a good position to be standing. Still be able to reach the, a log that drops down in for the splitter. And not be too close to the saw, which I, I'll make guards and everything for the saw. Uh, this is just one inch square tubing I got at this scrap yard when I went to get some of the other stuff. As far as my height for the valves, I just kind of guessed on that. I basically just stood there, figured out what would be a comfortable height for my arms to be, and went with that. I think it's 40 inches basically to the top of the knobs. Okay. 
uh, auto cycle valve has definitely got some weight to it. I think it weigh, it's 29 pounds, I think is what the specs are for it. Uh, my next valve beside that is going to be my saw and clamp. And it's on a two-spool joystick with float. Uh, the float side will be for the clamp. And I figured it figured before running the infeed, since I put the roller on the clamp, you could put it in the float position and run the infeed. Or you could raise it back up, either way. But since to get joystick valves, it pretty much has a float. That's kind of the function I used it for. Uh, with this valve mounted, the float's a little close to my splitter valve, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. Um, the next one's another two spool. This one's for the log lift and the in feed. The float function will be for the log lift down. The, uh, because of the way that the position of the floats, these valves had to be uh, mounted in opposite directions. So, one with fittings in, one with fittings out. Which is kind of a pain, but not a huge deal. At least it got the float functions in the way the directions I wanted them to be. The original plan was to have all the valves in a line, but in order to do that, this last valve, which will be for the wedge, would have been sticking way out. And I didn't want to go too close to where the tires, as far as where I'll put a fender over the tires, I didn't want to be too far outside of that. So I ended up settling on this location right between these two valves where it clears the wedge I don't think would be something you use all that often so having it up in that position didn't seem like a big deal to me called in a night there and during the night I decided I had to change these rails for the infeed chain uh, I had some some of the teeth that were kind of grabbing a hold of the sides I think because of the width I had them my original plan for these infeed cleats was to have three teeth uh, one in the middle and one on each outside so I Decided to change it not sure why this was a huge amount of work, but When it was all said and done and actually the chain felt like it moved better back and forth So I think it was worth it I had to order my saw cylinder, oh, safety glasses. Luckily that didn't get in my eye. I had ordered the saw cylinder when I ordered my valves because I knew exactly how long I needed that to be. Uh, I got a one inch cylinder, pretty much the smallest I could find, uh, at least through surplus center. Uh, it's a point oh or point six two five rod, uh, and then with my turning my pressure down and stuff, it should work out for the saw without it being 
uncontrollable or putting too much pressure down. We'll see. Um, with the with the 10 inch stroke, with the saw in the down position and the up position, I had a half inch difference between the mounting point. So I basically just split the difference uh, with my main concern on making sure the saw was down full distance it needed to be. That pretty much wraps up this one. Like I said, it was a short one. Uh, since I'm waiting on so much stuff, fittings. I have to get all my fittings in, put them all in, try to figure out all my hoses. Uh, I'm going to try to go with all pre-made hoses just to save some money on everything but we'll see I don't want I don't want to get the hose lengths out of control where they you really can't clean it up very well but I'll do what I gotta do there uh, hopefully should have everything this week so hopefully even the next episode won't be that far off but Thanks for thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. That goes up to seventy six subscribers at the time of editing this. That's it's pretty awesome that that many people were interested in this, and hopefully it helps you, gives you some ideas if you're trying to build one. So I'll catch you next time.